Hey guys, today we're going to be going over the basics of rail signals. I know this topic has been covered a lot, but I haven't seen any guides that explain how the signals operate in a way that I understand. So I wanted to make my own version of it in hopes that it helps clear up some of the functionality of both path and block signals and how they work. On a side note, as many of you know, 1.0 releases on the 10th of September and I've allocated some time off work and will be streaming gameplay of a fresh world save on the 13th, 14th and 15th on YouTube uh, and the details for that will be in the video description. I hope to see you guys there. So here we have the two basic train signals that you're going to find. The description for these in the game is really confusing and I didn't understand them at first and had to figure it out the hard way myself. But basically the pathing signal is essentially a block signal with an extra function. Uh, but we won't cover that just yet because uh, we're going to cover the basics of how a block signal works first and then we'll get into how the path signal works. So a lot of you probably hear people talking all the time about blocks. What is a block? A block is a section of rail between two signals. Um, and then you have a signal to control the flow of traffic through that section or that block. Now this can get a bit confusing because this actual rail signal is called a block signal and this section is called a block or rail block. So it's important to keep them separated from each other in your mind. They are two different things and I will try to point out which one of them I'm referring to when I'm talking about stuff to keep from confusing anyone. So now we know what a rail block is, we're going to have a look at how they work. So basically, this rail signal essentially works like a traffic light, allowing the flow of traffic to go through here depending on the direction and how much traffic is in there. And you'll notice that the light keeps turning red and green. If I place a train in this block, it will block this section and not allow the flow of traffic until this tra train has now moved through this block past this next traffic light. So if we move this train, so if we move that train into the next block just like that you'll see that the next train has moved up and it has freed up this block for this train to move into and now the next train can come and queue up. With that in mind, the next question you're probably asking is, Rocket, how big do I make my blocks? Well, it really depends on your rail network. And to be honest, it just depends on how much traffic you have. There's a lot of different variables. <clears throat> but a good blanket answer that I can give you is about this, the length of this train here, about one locomotive with four carriages long, three carriages long, sorry. I can't count. Generally, or however many blocks this is. What is that? Seven tiles. So between seven and ten tiles is a really good length for you to put each of your block signals apart, or your train signals, I should say, um, which would allow for generally pretty good flow of traffic on your train network. I also want to mention that when placing rails, like side by side, so um, like a normal two lane system that you have like one coming or uh, one going and one coming uh, don't place them any closer than these are placed here so it's just like this is just in the center of the center tile there in the center of that tile the reason is because if you place these any closer um, two things can happen one the rail signals can get confused with each other um, and you can end up with this bug where both the trains will stop going in either direction. It's, it's really weird. They'll both get to this signal of the, the center point here and they'll stop. Um, so don't place them any closer because of that reason. And the second reason is because if you place them too close to each other, when they go around corners or something like that, uh, they can actually crash into each other side on. Um, and so that can also be an issue for you. So just be aware of that when you're placing your, your rail sections down. Generally speaking, I would also put a block signal at the beginning and the end of each station 
A couple of little tips to note too is that if you have two rail sections that are very close to each other <clears throat> in conjunction with a switch, like this situation here where the, the light is touching the other rail, you can sometimes have issues where this switch gets confused with the train being on this rail or this rail and it can set it off even if it's over this side here. Also, the reason why block signal distance is important is because if you make the rail block too long, it can cause holdups once you have more than a couple of trains on that line. On the other side of that, if you make the blocks too short, you're just wasting your time placing loads of unnecessary signals and it looks really ugly. Don't overthink it though, it's not that important. Just roughly aim for 10 concrete blocks in length of spacing between each signal. Now let's look at something a little bit more complex. So here we have an intersection that I've made up and it's made entirely out of block signals. Now the block signals will make up this one whole area here, this whole white section as you can see. And the trains can traverse in any direction that they want and they won't collide with each other because once a train is in this section, as you can see, it blocks off all of the signals. So this one's blocked, this one's blocked, and this one's blocked. So there's no way into this intersection now other than um, for this train to leave and then the, the block will become freed again. So now you've got this issue where you've got a singular train in the middle of the intersection and it's blocked up the whole intersection. So the way that we can fix this is by using path signals. What, I'll show you what I mean by that. So if we take this train off, let me try, we'll let the trains go. Now, obviously, only one train can go through this intersection at a time. But if we instead, however, change the rail in signals to all block signal uh, path signals, now the trains can reserve a singular path through there. And if I instead put this singular train, let's just say I put this here it won't affect this train's ability to go around the corner now. So even though we only have one block, one rail block here, these pathing signals will allow the trains to allocate their own pathway through here. And if the trains don't collide with each other in their pathing, it will allow free travel for the trains. So just to recap, Using path signals, multiple trains can travel through one block at the same time. And when using block signals, only one train can travel through the rail intersection at a time. I also understand that the concept of how, how or where to place um, path signals can be very confusing. So the easiest way to remember where to place them is, you, there's an old saying called path in, chain out. So the path signal in is your in, like wherever your input is, and then your chain signal or your block signal, we'll call it chain for this, it's chain out. So the chain is where the exit is. So path in, chain out. Another little issue that you might encounter when you're trying to set up your rail network is this one right here. Sometimes you think that you've set all your rail signals up correctly and you'll get these exclamation marks flashing and you won't understand why. So it's best that you always match your, match your input and your output rail signals together. What do I mean by that? I mean, so you've got your chain outs. There's a, there's a chain out. There's a chain out. And there's a chain out. They're all green. But our input signals are different because we've got a path signal here, a path signal here, and we've got a, a block signal here, which won't work together. These different kinds of rail signals can't be mixed together on the same network. It just doesn't work. They won't, they won't link up together. So you can change this block signal here to a path signal and it will all work again and everything will be fine and dandy. Or you can change all of it to block signals and that will work just fine as well. To clarify, 
The entrance and exit signals don't all need to be the same kind of signal, but rather all of the entrance signals need to match together and all of the exit signals need to match together, i.e. all of the entrance signals are either path signals or block signals and vice versa for the exit signals. So the last thing I want to talk about with path signals is signaling priority. What do I mean by that? So there isn't really a way specifically to tell each sign, you know, like this, this path and this path have top priority and then this has a lesser priority, but there kind of is a way and I'll show you that now. The distance between this path signal and this first block signal here determine the priority of the track. So if you have a really short section here, you can see this train is almost stopping before this signal and calculating what it is that it's going to do. But you'll notice that on our main line here, the main trains can pretty much keep going because there's a long distance between the first block signal and the first path signal, because this distance is quite long, this train can allocate whichever path it wants to go to first. And because this distance is much smaller between this path signal and this block signal, this train will basically have to come to a stop almost every time, essentially making it like a stop sign at an intersection, which can be very beneficial if you've got like main lines like this and you don't want to clog them up all the time. So having this short distance between the path signal and the block signal can allow you to have priority on your main track that has a big distance between the block signal and the path signal. Here you can see an example of priority input lines where the black train has to wait at the intersection and the, for the train on the main line to go through the intersection before the black train can then pass. So let's talk about block signals versus path signals in a high speed environment. They can be really beneficial sometimes, but it really depends. If you see here, between these two signals here, because they're block signals and there was nothing impeding the path, the train that was just on this path here went straight through and it went through without stopping even once. Um, and you can see this train is going through without even stopping. This can be a better system in some circumstances than path signals. And you can also use path signals in another way, and I'll show you that now. So if we change these signals to both block signals here, you will see now that this train is much slower through this section because the train has to take time to make its decision up before it's gonna go through the path signal. However, because we talked before about pathing priority, the distance between this path signal and this block signal over here is much longer than the distance between these two, the train on this track will always go first. But you have to take into consideration, see even now, there's nothing on the rail in front of this train and it had to stop at that signal. So while it's important, important to note that you can use pathing signals to make priority lanes, it isn't always necessarily the fastest setup that you can have. And that is part of why you see in my train network only block signals everywhere. Because personally, I believe the block signal to be a lot simpler in design and a lot faster in allowing trains to move through high speed rail blocks. Well, that just about does it for this video, guys. There's still so much we haven't covered like roundabouts and high speed intersections. But if there's enough interest in this video, I'll be sure to make more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And as always, if you found this helpful, be sure to share, sub and like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.